taking a walk this morning and uh, we came across some tracks and at first I thought it was a big dog or a wolf. There's been some wolves around. Um, so I was just kind of trying to make out the difference and uh, try to figure out what it was and it turns out it was actually a cougar track uh, when I looked more closely at it. And so here I just want to talk to you a little bit about you know the differences between dog tracks and cougar tracks and can I see a little bit what this what this cat has been doing here. And so here's a cougar track right here. And uh, it's about four inches by four inches, uh, you know, which is an average size for a cat. I like that. Um, a bobcat track would be, you know, a lot smaller, maybe a couple of inches like that. Uh, so kind of the size of the pad here, that's the pad. You know, just like we have a pad right here for us, um, the cats also have a pad here be before their toes. And um, so let's talk about some differences between cats and dogs. First, the shape of the pad is different. Um, I don't know if you can see very clearly here, but it's kind of like an M. So it goes up, there's a little lobe here, and then it goes down slightly, then goes back up slightly before it goes back down. So there's two lobes at the front of the pad, and then in the back there's three lobes. One, two, three. So that's, the. if you have a cat, you can look at that, they're exactly the same. Two lobes at the front, three lobes at the back. For dog tracks, they're different in that they're more like triangular shape. So you have like, you know, one lobe at the top of the pad, and then two lobes at the bottom here. So that's one clue that this is a cat. The second clue is the shape of the toe. Um, a dog toe is kind of oval, you know, it's fairly symmetrical, fairly oval, whereas for cats, they're a lot more teardrop shaped. So you can have a point here, and then a bigger lobe at the bottom here, and then finish up at the point. So that's the second clue that this is a cat. Third clue is that cats have retractable claws, and so in general, unless it's very slippery and they can I want to have a better grip on it, you don't show they don't show their um, claws in the snow. And here, there's no indication of that. Whereas dogs always have their claws out, and therefore, in general, they always sh they, in general they show uh, in the snow. So that's another clue, uh, and yet another clue that this is a cat, is that dog prints are fairly symmetrical. They have two toes in the front and then two toes just offset of that in a very symmetrical manner. Whereas in a cat, they have a much more asymmetrical um, pattern in their toes. So just like us really, that's our four toes. You see that this finger is shorter than my middle finger here and then the other two are shorter yet. And that's what we see here. We have a short one here, the longer one here, then the second one is here, and the fourth one is here. And so, you know, that's how you can tell that this is a left foot, because the leading toe, the one up front, the leading toe, you know, is the second one starting from the inside, it's just like us. You know, whereas here, a little back, you'll see that this is, you know, a cougar with two lobes in the front here asymmetrical patterns with the leading toe that's here, the second from the inside, so that's the right foot. And uh, cougars have four toes that register. Um, if you look, again, if you have a cat, you can see that they have a fifth toe kind of up on their wrist, um, but it's really rare, like unless it's on really deep snow or very um, sloped terrain that you'll see this fifth toe in the back. But you see four toes register in the front. And here it's kind of a little trick because you can see a fifth toe right here on the side. But it's because um, the cat is walking in a direct register. And that means that he puts his hind foot directly on top of his front foot when he moves. And so this fifth toe here is actually the toe from the front foot and then he put his right foot almost exactly on top of his previous paw, just slightly to the right of it, which is why you see this little extra toe here. Um, 
but you shouldn't make a mistake this is not actually you know from the same foot this one two three four is one foot and this one is underneath and um, cats like to walk in a direct register like that quite a bit because it has advantages if you're a stalker you know you can imagine that if you walk through the forest like this you can make quite a bit of noise uh, when you put your foot down so they're actually really careful when they put their front foot down not to step on any stick then of course it's a lot harder to see where your back foot is and so if you get into the habit of putting your back foot exactly where your front foot is then you know of course uh, that area has been smooshed down already and it's already been um, determined that it was um, without debris so they do that a lot um, to just put their hind foot directly on top of their front foot and that's called a direct register and also in the snow there's an added advantage in that that spot you know has already been somewhat warmed up by its front paw so that it's um, hind foot you know it doesn't have to dig into some new really cold snow so that's gonna con conserves energy a little bit and you'll see a lot of animals doing that in the snow uh, and of course it also makes sense when there's a lot of snow to have to put your foot you know that's what humans do as well put your foot where another foot has been before because the snow has already been compacted down it's a lot easier to go through it you don't have to break any more new snow so that's kind of it for this um, and this cougar was kind of interesting is that he came from over there up the path and he could just kind of follow that little trench and here you can probably see its tracks back there here and then he took a turn right after this small dead tree and uh, he went up uh, that way through the trees and uh, I'll show you in a minute we're gonna go back there uh, then he came back down the exact same way and he stepped exactly in the same tracks that he made on his way up um, so that was pretty interesting and then he came across the path here and uh, then that's his track down there leading through the trees back there and um, yeah so that's cougar tracks okay so here we're at the area where uh, the cougar walked on his own tracks and you can see here this big thing here uh, you can see toes here and then toes there and so that's the cougar track going this way when he first came up and then same cougar when he went down put his foot exactly where it was before going this way uh, so that's pretty interesting and then our dog was caring enough to um, make some tracks for us as well they're not very clear because the snow is not the best really and um, but we can point a few things uh, first you see the pad here it's kind of this triangle here and you see that it ends up in one point which makes it a dog um, and also you see the claw marks here boom 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 in front of each toe uh, compared to the cat that has zero claw marks and uh, you'll see that the toe is a lot more symmetrical here as well and uh, here is another track from the dog you'll see that it's a lot more symmetrical shape overall than um, than the cougar um, so there we go that was cougar tracks oh.